praise and great glory as we approach unto you with the intent that we may know you. It is written that him that boasted boasts not in his knowledge or in his wisdom. Let him that boasted boasted that he knoweth and understandeth me. Tonight we ask that the vista of insight might open, that such as us will have access to heavy things that the psalmist of old was not allowed to see. Grant us grace tonight in Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. God bless you. So we have been discussing on, on the subject of revelational gifts. And we have been on the gift of discernment of spirit. Hallelujah. The gift of discernment of spirit by which we can decipher error from truth, good from evil, reality from counterfeit, divine from demonic, true from false, spiritual from carnal. Hallelujah. Now we want to look at the gift of word of knowledge. Uh, the word of knowledge, the gift of word of knowledge. Why is it a word of knowledge? Why word of knowledge? Why is this so? Who can help me? Why is it called word of knowledge? Why not gift of knowledge? But it's called word of knowledge. And the reason is because the gift of word of knowledge is a fraction. We are granted access supernaturally into a fraction or a fragment of the knowledge that is an exclusive staff of God. Access to what? To a fragment. Amen. We are given access to a fragment or a fraction to a knowledge that is an exclusive reserve of God. Hallelujah. So the word of knowledge is a tiny portion of knowledge. Now, so the word of knowledge is a tiny portion or a tiny fraction of God's total knowledge revealed to a believer as a strategic information. A tiny portion of God's total knowledge revealed to a believer as a strategic information to enhance a purpose, either spiritual or physical. And the word of knowledge is a tiny portion of God's total knowledge revealed to a believer as a strategic information to enhance a purpose, either spiritual or physical. Now, can you turn with me quickly to First Samuel chapter 2? First Samuel chapter 2. First of all, I would like us to understand the fact that God is the custodian of all knowledge. Hallelujah. That's, that's his enterprise. He's a custodian of all knowledge. And that's an exclusive reserve. Alright? But you see, it's not all knowledge that is relevant to you. Strategic knowledge has to do with a fraction of information that gives you an advantage in a particular situation. And that's what God shares with us in the gift of word of knowledge. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 2, the Bible says, And Anna prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted 
in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies. Because I rejoice in thy salvation, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Why? Because for the Lord is a God of knowledge. He is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The reason why you cannot play God is because you don't have sufficient knowledge. So you cannot judge accurately. It is unto him that judgment is committed because he is the custodian of all the many sides of knowledge. You see, in this frame of reference, you can only have access to the knowledge that is in keeping with your own vista. And many times we conclude about people on the strength of that minute, narrow knowledge which you have seen from your window, from your perspective. That is not sufficient to be able to weigh an action. It is God that is a God of knowledge. He has all the dimensions of knowledge. He has all, all the orientations of knowledge and sequences of knowledge. And it is because of that that he can judge and weigh actions from the right perspective. Do you get that? But you see, word of knowledge is not God giving you this kind of knowledge. This kind of exclusive knowledge only pertains to God. It's only him that can handle knowledge of this sort at this level. But in word of knowledge, what God does is that he shares a fraction, fraction, a little portion of the knowledge that he has access to. He shares it with you. And the reason for sharing that knowledge is so as to give you an advantage in a particular situation. Now, so the gift of word of knowledge, please mark this, the gift of word of knowledge is informative. He shares out of the modicum of knowledge that is available to him at his own level. And he gives you a tiny fraction that is informative in order to administer an advantage to you for either a spiritual purpose or a physical purpose. That's what of knowledge. Now, you are going to see... Uh, uh, Hallelujah. It's more convenient for me to do what I'm doing with this one. That's why I have not. It's the battery. Huh? It's from the way I'm wearing it. You know, a lot of things go through your mind. So if you are teaching and you are not holding something, it helps you. Your brain is... Holy Ghost can inspire you quickly. God shares with you a fraction of the knowledge that he has access to. A fraction. Just a little fraction. In order to give you an advantage. <laughs> so God shares a little fraction of his massive scope of knowledge with you to give you an advantage. Have you realized we do a lot of teaching? But it's not every teaching that we do that you remember. It is only that which is written in your heart that can come back to you. Uh, because when you are in a crisis situation, under pressure, under persecution, what happens to you is that your mind is suspended. The devil knows how to bring terror to you such that it, you, it will affect or bend your thought pattern cannot affect the economy of God that is at work on your heart. So God shares that information with you. If you are a man of prayer, you will know that we have a limitation in our prayer. According to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26. You can bring that on the screen. The Bible says we know not. There's a deficiency in order for us to engage and transact with God effectively. There is a fundamental deficiency that we already have. 
which is in the area of knowledge we know not what we need to pray about and we don't know the extent of prayer that is required to fulfill a particular transaction those levels those gaps of knowledge exist even in the transaction of prayer hallelujah are you here so it exists in the transaction of prayer and so you will need the help of the holy spirit you operate more in the word of knowledge the gift of word of knowledge in the place of prayer where god lays a prayer point he lays an emphasis he lays a scripture those are activities of the holy spirit that provide resources so that you can be sufficient in transacting spiritually now you notice that what is laid upon your heart in that particular situation is not all of the knowledge that god has but a fraction a tiny fraction of that holding of knowledge in order to equip you to be able to operate and transact effectively under several conditions sometimes the reason why you need a word of knowledge is not because of a spiritual transaction because of something physical remember that the word of knowledge is informative so god by his spirit operating in his economy brings strategic information that gives you an, an advantage in a particular situation you have authority to to deal with that situation because you have been given a strategic information that puts you at an advantage now you see our authority is not in doubt satan knows that we have authority in christ jesus and we have access to that authority in the name of jesus he knows that but you see uh in spiritual transactions for instance we need to operate with precision in order for us to be effective now one of the reasons one of the infrastructures that god has put in place to ensure that we operate with precision is a gift of word of knowledge precision when you are conducting deliverance for instance you need knowledge so that you can be precise it is when you are precise that you can actually address a particular situation accurately so this gift is informative it's informative and it gives us strategic information so that we can have the advantage when dealing with either a spiritual situation or a physical situation are you still with me so we have it's needful for us to be able to understand let it come to us as a revelation that god is a custodian of all knowledge just like when he told his prophet he said son of man brought him to the valley of dry bones and says can these bones live again now the son of man understands that uh, that question is actually a little bit above his pay grade and he now says, only thou knowest because you are the only one that is in custody of all knowledge and that was the right answer it was not his jurisdiction he uh, there was no form of learning that he could have had that would put him in a position to answer that question so he acknowledged that it was god that was a custodian of all knowledge all right so that must register so that if you know that god is a custodian of all knowledge many times you will seek a word of knowledge from him so that you will be more on the advantage in a particular situation because it has come to you as a revelation that God knows our God is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed and so we go to him to seek strategic knowledge to share a tiny fraction of that which he knows that will give us an advantage in a particular situation like when you are going for a crusade there's not, nothing wrong in going to consult God and say God, you have all knowledge can you give me a little snapshot about one or two people uh, so that when I come to the ground, it will be obvious that I, I have access to something that is beyond the natural. Uh, give me an advantage on the spotlight. Hallelujah. So if you know that God is the compendium of all knowledge, it will be an encouragement for you to seek that fraction that you need so that you have an advantage in a particular situation. 
If you are still with me, say amen. amen. And so we have scriptures like uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 to 3, which is indicative of, it supports the fact that God has all knowledge. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, it supports the fact that God has all knowledge. Amen. I want to read something from my script. You, you can copy it if you want. Accurate knowledge is the basis of precision in spiritual activities. Accurate knowledge is the basis of precision in spiritual activities. It is when God inspires a man with a fraction of the information that God has exclusive reach to. That is the gift of word of knowledge. Number two, word of knowledge is informative. Word of knowledge is informative. It does not come by natural reasoning or training. It is informative. It is informative. Now, I want to show us a few functions of the gift of word of knowledge. Hallelujah. First of all, word of knowledge will bring conviction of truth. John chapter 1, verse 45 to 49. Can you flash that scripture for me? It will bring conviction of truth. John 1, 45 to 49. Can we have the scripture on the screen? Conviction. We saw the uh, function of the gift of discernment of spirit. If you were not here yesterday and today in the morning, you need to pick the tape. It's on that frequency that we are continuing today. Jesus found that Nathan, Philip found that Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph next verse we have found him and Nathanael said unto him can there any good thing come out of Nazareth Philip said unto him come and see next verse and Nathanael said unto him and Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him behold an Israelite in whom is no guile. No, I'm, I'm good. An Israelite in whom is no guile. Right, go on. And Nathaniel said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before you call, before Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw you. What was the result? Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Thou art the son of God. It was easy to convince Nathaniel. Just with a word of knowledge. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. He used to hear rumors that Jesus was the son of God and king of Israel. He did not believe. But Jesus now startled him with an information. I saw you. You are an Israelite in whom there is no guy. Your mother is Israelite. Your father is Israelite. You are pure blood. You are born free. He said, where did you know me? For your information, I saw you. Before Philip met you, under the tree, I saw you there. Ah, you are the son of God. Conviction came on the spot. If you are going to engage people, especially on the evangelical platform, one of the tools you need to pass home your message of reconciliation is the tools that will bring confirmation. That what you are doing, actually you have a mandate from God to do it. There's a supernatural dimension to your delivery. When that information came, arguments were dissolved. Uh, the young man was convinced that these dimensions were not learned in Harvard. This is supernatural. And he believed. Now, so first and foremost, we need to understand... That this gift brings conviction of truth. John chapter 4 verse 16 to 19. John 4, 
16 to 19 and verse 29. Help me. John 4, 16. Jesus said unto her, Go and call thy husband and come hither. He's talking to the woman at the well. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou as well said, I have no husband. Go on. This is the word of knowledge now. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said thou truly. You lie a lot, but this one you do not, you do not hide it. I noticed that you twist your tongue anyhow. And, but this matter, you decided to say the truth. And what was the resultant effect of that? Next verse. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Hallelujah. After this word of knowledge, the woman's heart was more open to him. Before this time, the woman was, had cultural issues, sociological issues. There were contentions and all of that. Until Jesus went beyond all the cultural barriers and he said, Where is your husband? He moved the discussion to word of knowledge. When you are ministering to Muslims, don't try to argue. They, they have books that have been crystallized just for argument's sake. Take the argument out of that field. Take it into the supernatural. They, you are five in your family. And there is one that is a sickler. Ah! The, the subject has changed. The person will be quoting Surah 3 for you, Surah 4, which are uh, Surahs without foundation. Just take it out of there. And uh, there, there's a challenge. And suddenly the, the, the gist will shift base. And I assure you, Muslims believe prophets more. Yes. Probably more than Christians. Yes. Once you can bring a supernatural dimension that uh, especially when it has to do with revelation, you have clients already. Islamic clients. I have a few of them. I have a few of them where are still working something out. Maybe you may need to labor like that for a while before they say, see, this is your thing. I know it's true. But I'm afraid. Then the discipleship goes to another level. It goes to another level. goes to another level. And uh, what, one word of knowledge can break the backbone of, of religion and bring a man to a point of contemplating what he was instructed never to think about. Word of knowledge. It brings conviction to truth. That's the first function. Secondly, it can confirm something that God has shown by another means. Maybe you had an encounter with God and you came for service. You are not very, very certain about the encounter you had. And then suddenly the preacher now comes. And he tells you what you saw and what God was requiring of you. And that has now settled you on that matter. There are you see, none of us is an expert in spiritual things. There are many times you enter into some corridors in the spirit. It's not as if you doubt the encounter, but you are not, you are not certain. And that, none of us will outgrow such things, alright? So God knows, and that's why it's a body of life. It's a body of truth. Okay? So God moves somebody, the gift of word of knowledge, to bring confirmation to you. So it is stronger. Especially in areas, information that God brings to you, and based on probably your background, your inadequacy, your financial situation, you, you, you prayed that, that what you heard was not what God was saying. You prayed so because everything about what God was saying was intimidating you and uh, you could not see yourself walking in the light of that and you wished it were not so. And then suddenly you came to church. Uh, and somebody enters into the gift of what knowledge, brings those dimensions back to you, and it is confirmed. So, even though it is difficult, you know that at least it is from God. So the gift can bring what? Confirmation. Of things that you received through other means. Hallelujah. Okay. Number three. It is a basic equipment for spiritual warfare and intercession. It's a basic equipment for spiritual warfare and intercession. That's where Romans chapter 8 verse 26 comes in. Basic equipment for spiritual warfare and intercession. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. 
basic equipment for spiritual warfare and intercession. Now, if we are going to be intercessors, we need this gift. My wife took in and the expected time of delivery passed. And I began to intercede and said, no, 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 this is not, this is not the agreement. And while I was interceding, my eyes were open. Meanwhile, we'll look at, uh, we're going to look at something. Uh, a gift can have different channels. This word of knowledge can come through a vision. It can come through an inner voice. It can come through a dream. It can come through an inner witness. It can come through a knowing. So there are various channels, but it's the same gift that is at work. As long as what you received was informative, it is a gift of word of knowledge. Now, while I was praying, I now saw a vision. I saw a woman with this Chinese cap. You know those Chinese guys have a cap that they can wear and their eyes will be covered. I saw somebody like that. She just came. The eyes were covered. I said, oh, is it you that has not allowed? And that was it. Delivery was the next day. See, I would not have been able to address the what was responsible for the overstretching of the time if I was not given an informative disclosure. Informative. So you are the one responsible for this delay. That was the prayer. That was all. And the yoke broke. Sometimes the devil masquerades behind situations and behind circumstances and the moment through informative advantage, you can see the culprit. Most times, he lets go. His strength actually is in his capacity to hide the source of what is happening. And if you can crawl through word of knowledge and you peep into it, and that disclosure comes, most times he is not ready for a fight. He just goes. His strength is in hiding it. And so word of knowledge comes to disclose it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Somebody was in the room sleeping with a witch. And whenever he sleeps, something will press him. He wake up. He was looking at thunder. Like his enemy was thunder. His enemy was lightning. His enemy was in the market. His enemy was coming from the village. His enemy was, was where? In the room. So close, but he never knew. Looking for thunder to fight. Looking for lightning. That this beast is... No. Yeah. But as close as it was. It took a disclosure for him to know. If you help me tell your neighbor, the fact that something is close to you, <laughs> it's, not, it's not within your range of knowledge. It's not within your range. <laughs> it may be close, but not within the range of knowledge. God had to bring something informative. And say, have you, the word of knowledge came in form of a question. Have you checked who is by your side? Then he just realized he has checked everywhere except where. <laughs> so he gave him both the person. I know you there. After the disclosure, nobody asked the witch to leave. She packed. Because the witch knew the guy had enough capacity to deal with the situation. So there was no need. The strength of the witch was in her ability to hide. May God open your eyes. <laughs> Before the, before, before, before the project that the witch is running, before it is accomplished, may you, may you discover it. Amen. The guy checked everywhere, checked. Was looking through the window. Maybe we see a black thing moving. Is anything? The moment he goes. The third time when they did that, when he woke up, he took time before he was able to stabilize his breathing. He knew that this foe eh, came for him. And then he, he entered the spirit. He spoke in top. Bah, bah, bah. Then Holy Ghost said, Have you checked? <laughs> I can see that you are checking. You are checking. I, I, I see it. But have you checked what is by the side? And that time the guy was forming sleep. He rushed <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord bring disclosures. May He open our understanding. You may not know how little you know until you are, you are in a, a spiritual situation. The Bible says we know not. What we should pray 
as we ought to pray. We don't know what to pray. And just in case we know what to pray, we don't even know how much we ought to pray. There are too many variables in carrying out a spiritual activity effectively. Too many variables. And it's through the gift of word of knowledge. Informative. informative. It, it, it makes us ready for intercessory transactions, for warfare. Hallelujah. Now, when we go out to fight spiritual battles, we are expecting that God will be coming with us and He will be manifesting in the form of word of knowledge to give us the statutory advantage that we need to overcome the enemy. Hallelujah. All right. Number four. It activates faith to receive, especially in a healing related situation. It activates faith to receive. I have watched Benny Hinn's ministry a lot. Watch his ministry a lot. And I see something from his ministry. I see that when the revelational gifts go into, especially the word of knowledge, goes into, into activity, he gives a word of knowledge about somebody. He tells, he gives the color of the person's trouser. And the person knows that, okay, it's me. Instantly, it has, that word of knowledge has propelled the release of the faith of that individual. And suddenly the individual collides with the gift of healing. Many times we need the first aid, first aid of revelational gifts to, to activate people's faith to receive power gifts. We need that, the first aid, first aid treatment from revelational gifts that will activate the faith of people to receive what? Power gifts. And I saw that example in the ministry of Benihin very, very clearly. Hallelujah. Now, don't forget, what of knowledge is informative. It's informative. Informative. Hallelujah. You just come and you shake somebody and suddenly he gives you insight about the person. He said, this person, you can't work with him. And then the person will now make effort to connect with you, take your phone number, tries to fraternize, but the information has already come. This one, you cannot work with him. And then he now you go somewhere else, you now see another person. That one is difficult to meet. And they say that's the one you work with. It doesn't make logical sense. But by the time you get involved with that person, you will see several things about the person that was responsible for that information. The information is very, very strategic. I was praying one day, praying, 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 praying. You know, when I was still in school, when when we, when we lost our dad and all of that, so you'd be trusting God for where the school fees will come from and all, all that stuff. So while I was praying, God now said, because I have some brothers in one working in Shell, here and there. So if it's money, they, they don't have any problem. But in prayer, God told me, it is my other sister that will help me. That I should not think these people... It took me time to realize that. That the information God will give you in three seconds, you will, you will, you will verify it after five years. Meanwhile, this my sister I'm talking about at that time had nothing. But she was the only one that had the heart to take responsibility of what was happening. And I saw that God chooses people not on the basis of resources, but on the basis of heart. And as she was slaving out of the little that she had to see that that support was provided. That was how God began to increase her. It is the heart that God blesses. God knows who can give right here by looking at your heart. The Bible says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. I've always said that the word translated issues in Aramaic is the same word translated boundary. Boundary. So your boundaries are already in your heart. So he sees you, he knows the extent you can go. Because he knows the configuration of your heart. He can read the reins of the heart. He said, go there. So, and meanwhile, if God has instructed me, eh, it's not as if I will go to her and prophesy that God said, no, I will prove it now. By, I will make attempt to come close. Huh? Eh, okay, if the person that Baba sent me to is not ready, I will, I will, I will, I will doubt what he has said. I, I, I won't go close. So, I saw that heart was there. 
But there was nothing. And then from that point, as she started making a tent, God began to bless her. And then it was when God blessed her that her heart closed. <laughs> when we were struggling, eh? the, the heart was okay. Then when the blessing now came, the heart closed. But my own project, I know it's in God's front burner. He will, he will reach out. He will, he will solve it. He will solve it. I went back to pray. He said, no. He still pointed. I said, which kind of thing is this? Hallelujah. See, now I said, okay, come, come. What are you doing, Kano? Come. And now came there. But you see, when I went to Kano, when I went to Kano, I was searching for God. By the time I got to Kano, I found him. I was there for like two years, four months. When I came back from Kano, I was a little bit different spiritually from how I was before. I had apprehended God a little. So and, and I had known how to receive the word of the Lord. So when that prosperity came to them, their spiritual life died. So I became their pastor. I said, no, this one you want to take will not prosper. And then they try it, then it, they enter trouble. They come back, we pray, we beg God, he released. So it happened like four or five times. Then, okay, this is our pastor. That's how I survived. <laughs> so I, I move. At every point in time, I don't want the name of God to be put in the mud. So, uh, you know, you have, you have to magnify your office. So that the, the fact that it's your brother doesn't mean that you should despise God because you made yourself cheap. No, that's not me. Do you understand? So we're running. We're running that scale like that. And then suddenly God now speaks to me. You are going to leave outside of this country. When I told her, she laughed. <laughs> and then three months later, that was how they had to go to Canada. That lady was the one that discipled me. Was trained, he trained me. He taught me how to pray. Hallelujah. But now, I am the one discipling her. So don't be, wait on the Lord. <laughs> now, when I look back in retrospect, I wonder if those little informative droppings that came from God, if he did not come, how would I be, have been able to navigate through the waters? Many times we'll go for economic empowerment seminars. And uh, what we teach people is atheistic. Hard work. I can show you people that are working hard, but it's not amounting to anything. I hope you know the covenant of prosperity, the one Abraham had with God, it was a spiritual covenant. You are going to enter into it by spiritual means. Hard work is too, is, too, is too natural to be the reason why a man migrates. It's too natural. It's too natural. So, uh, focus, focus. Even, even a Buddhist, more Buddhists, they focus more than us. Even. But if you are going to navigate into heritage, you are going to navigate into heritage, there is a support system that comes from God. One of it is word of knowledge. It gives you strategic information. You know who is on your side. Who is disposed to you? Who wants to be a friend to you? Who can be a support to you? Because you can't do anything on your own. You need support. And then God. The people may not even look like people that facially look like people that are compassionate. But God will give you an information that is superior to their external look. I have seen those little, little Droppings of information very strategic. In life. It was as if I was walking on a tight rope, and if I did not hear properly, I would suffer. Don't labor, don't labor around someone who you know God has not opened the heart to help you. Live there. What drama are you creating? Don't labor there. Go back to God. There are informative advantages He will give you that will reveal your own pathway. And the support structure he has put in place to give you reinforcement until the day of your destiny breaks. We are everywhere begging. We are, no, if the heart of a man is not open, in fact, you have exposed yourself by seeking help there. Why not reach out to informative advantage? 
So word of knowledge is what? It's informative. I can tell you on and on, on and on, there were people. Was it not? Where did I preach? I preached in Equa Church number one many years ago. And two guys came. They said we are from Atlanta. From Atlanta, US. We heard your message. And you were you were hard taken. Glory to God. I I been ministering. I said, Oh, I, you, is this how you preach every day or you just got it right this time? <laughs> Glory. <laughs> I said, maybe I did. Maybe I just got it right today. Where's your ministry? I said, okay. I told them that we had an evening meeting. So it was Saturday contact like this. I went there for Saturday evening and then they followed me back here when we got here. I, then I told them that before we entered, I said, I'm a charismatic. In our services, there's noise. So I was the way I was because of the environment. We are mad people. <laughs> when he came here and the power of God moved, he, he started crying. Two of them started crying. They said, We want to see you in the office. Took me to the office. As they were saying, give me your email. Give everything. Baba had told me that these ones will not come back. Just be nice. But this is not where I'm taking you. <laughs> be ni- just be nice to them. Somebody came from the other day from Uganda. said, I'm taking you to Uganda. The information came again. Say, this is not, it's not by this man. Please don't. Be nice. Just be nice. Just be nice. But this is not. Yeah. What? Some of you. That Uganda is breaks me. Say, ah, ah, ah. Should I go for? Should I go for that? Yeah. Meanwhile, when that guy was telling me about Uganda, right? Another of my friend was here. What God registered to me was. So I withdrew. That my friend liked the idea. So he now advanced. Uh, you know me. I will stop you. <laughs> I don't know what revelation you have. Maybe it will it will work for you. The guy said, you're going to come to Kenya. So, my friend went to Kenya. The guy that invited him, eh, was in Uganda. He said, have you come? I sent a taxi driver to to pick you. Welcome. I hope you brought money. It's money we need to do. (laughs) You see, a little information can save you. (laughs) Did you... Please help me ask your neighbor. Did you come with money? <laughs> I hope you brought money. So that my friend had to check into a hotel and he started dry fasting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> May you not <know> fast dry. <laughs> Out of problem. <laughs> Fasted, dry fasting for nine days. It was on the ninth day that God showed him and said, oh yeah, stand up. Move now. He said, that place, they are clapping hands. Enter there. So when he entered, the usher said, where are you from? I'm a Nigerian missionary. Missionary? Hey! Took him to the preacher. Told the preacher to leave the pulpit. <laughs> and he came there. And the guy shouted, out of dry fasting for nine days. He hoped that was where the door opened. The door opened that day. Guess what? From that place, there's a televangelist, all names with help. You will know all of them. The televangelist I used to preach in Kenya on the TV. This guy met with the evangelist. And when he saw the evangelist, ah, he shook the evangelist and he fell down. So he began to manifest. Cast out some spirit and saw vision. The husband was crying. He became a celebrity from that day. When that guy heard in Uganda that this guy has broken through, he traveled in the night with night bus, 13 hours, and came back and said, Oh boy. I say, <laughs> May you know, may, may the Lord, the Lord will help us. That thing you are calling international ministry can be dry fasting. <laughs> The guy showed up. 
It is those people, that family that now flew him to Uganda. One of the largest conferences they hold in Uganda yearly. They did politics and pushed him to, to the altar. When he, he shouted, <laughs> I don't want this. One of us, one of us. Uh, but you will not know the one. The whole place, boom, did evil, uh, deliverance, all kinds of things. That's where they, his airfare came. He had invitation to five churches the next year. Immigration issues. They wanted to, they were begging him to change to become a Ugandan. Uh, a little information, eh? Can save you from a long line of warfare. Word of knowledge. It's informative. Let's go to the twin brother word of knowledge. That's word of wisdom. You see, so just like word of knowledge, it's a fraction of knowledge. Abi? Word of wisdom too is a fraction of wisdom. Now, what's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Who can help us? Hey! The difference between knowledge and wisdom. Microphone. Where's the microphone? Because we are going for practicals now. If you will allow me for 15 minutes for practicals. 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes. Yes, someone is reaching out. The difference between knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge can be a sentimental ideology on something. We are not seeking sociology admission. <laughs> we are wine wine Bible school. <laughs> can you come down to our level? What is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Sorry, sir. All right. All right. <laughs> knowledge is informative. Wisdom is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just got it, but don't, 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 don't shout. We are not sure of all others. We are sure of you. Only you. Yes, who can help us out? Knowledge is informative. Wisdom is. You see, they have gone into mathematics. <laughs> it's not Japanese knowledge we are looking for right now. We are looking for divine knowledge. All right, knowledge is informative. Wisdom is directive. Write that down. So the word of knowledge is informative. Word of wisdom is directly. The information that is captured in word of knowledge has to do with either things of, that happened in the past or things that are happening in the present. But word of wisdom is directive in nature. Word of wisdom is directive. In nature. Uh, let me give you a definition, a working definition. Well, on my script, I have written God functions by wisdom. And His wisdom is revealed in everything He does. You can see that in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. His wisdom is revealed in everything He does. He functions by wisdom. So, God's wisdom brings solution to a chaotic situation. God's wisdom brings solution to a chaotic situation. So the gift of word of knowledge is a revelation, a fragment of God's knowledge, which is informative. But the gift of word of wisdom is a fragment of God's wisdom which is directive. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. If the iron be blunt and it do not wedge, wet the edge, then 
must he put more strength but wisdom is profitable to direct now the profit of wisdom is realized in the direction that it gives profit of wisdom is realized in the direction that it gives so those days when the chaotic situations manifested in the nation what they did was that they ran to the prophet there is this bitter water here and that's the only source of water we have available in the city and the prophet now comes with a directive instruction to put salt at a source and then when you put salt the salt that is supposed to make it more bitter becomes what heals it and then the water becomes sweet that is directive and so if you are prayed by word of wisdom because word of wisdom is designed to bring solution to a chaotic situation so if there is a chaotic situation it will take word of wisdom to bring a solution to it i hope you know you remember in the book of acts of the apostles chapter 6 hallelujah where the number of the disciples multiplied and then murmurings began and all that kind of stuff began it was a word of wisdom that delivered the church that time and the word of wisdom revealed that it was time to set up the diaconate people in the body of christ in the local expression of the body of christ whose duty is to provide administration that was where it came from it came through a word of wisdom so the very establishment of the office of the deacons was as a result of a word of wisdom that came in a time of chaos i hope you know that we encounter chaos here and there almost every day that means you need word of wisdom almost every day directive directive instructions from god one day we drove into the the mud then we tried for 30 minutes if we enter the mud more then when i came out Babana say reverse and from the layout the topography of the place reverse looks like when you reverse they'll have to tow the car eventually but baba said what reverse. and because of physics because of elevation and alignment reverse did not look like the answer so we went back into the car and drove again for another 45 minutes frontward After laboring and becoming weary, we now say, let's try this this. And then we just did it. And we're gone. What needless pain we bear. <laughs> what needless pain. It is directive. I've been in situations before they brought cripples and Baba say, slap them on the waist. Three times. And you, the two times pain the people. He pain them. The third one, the, the thing. It was word of wisdom. It is what? Direct. Okay, it's time for practice. You have gotten it now. So no more, no need for me to open the other scriptures. Now give me volume. Hallelujah. According to the scriptures, there are 13 postures that your spirit can assume. And only one of them is accurate. It's accurate. It is only when your spirit becomes light. That you are most powerful in natural you believe when you have muscles that's when you are powerful but in the spirit when you are light the lighter you are the more powerful you are. because your spirit must become an athlete having the abilities to reach high places high domains to stand in the council of god to be present in the procession that breaks out from heaven that what that's what makes you a powerful person and there are atmospheres that actually activate these realities. Hallelujah. You need to find yourself as a student of the school of the spirit. Uh, several things I found about myself is that I must get 
the Lord's song. The Lord's song is a vehicle. It's a vehicle by which I ascend to high places in the spirit. And when I function from those high places, I have control over the natural. That's why I asked the psalmist to watch that our song again. That, that's the reigning song. You still, they are still singing it in heaven. Now I'm still teaching so you can sit down, alright? So, so that you can see the practical, you can observe it very well. Hmm? I want to start with word of wisdom. I will let you lose, but not now. Glory. Now, you see this, the edge of this rock. Huh? Edge of this rock. The direction I've received is, some people will stand at the edge of this rock. And when they stand there, God will give them their miracle. We will see whether it's true. So you, you can go and stand there. You. You can go and stand there. You, you can stand there. Because he showed me the people to stand there. The people he wants to... He wants to... Um, hey, you. Pretty. Come. Stand there. You. You now behave like me. Make sure your leg touches the tip of this rock. Uh, try. you want to give. Begin to give. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, that which you said you want to give. This is the instruction that they should stand here and you will release those things. So, Lord, I ask that you begin to release it. Now, wait for him to come and give you. Wait for him. This is his business, not my own. Release those things that you say you will give. This is your business, not my business. Release what you are giving. We have fulfilled the requirement. Okay, it's coming now. It's coming. It's coming strong. 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 Yes, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. From the crown of your You can't resist it. It's very strong. You can't resist it. You can't resist it. You can't resist it. You can't resist it. It's, it's very strong. It's a delivery from heaven. Now, now, please don't be distracted. You people here. You see, the reason why God is moving is because He directed it. This is word of wisdom. There's a direction. Did you get that? There is what? There's a direction. Then when you follow the directive, you leave the results to God. But just make sure you head well. If you head well, go to sleep. Follow the directive and what? Leave the results. That's how miracles happen on the crusade ground. He gives you a directive. You see, I have nothing to do with what is happening there. Say direct. Say direct. He will run my life. He will never leave in God. You will run my life. Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. This delivery, let a full measure of the delivery come upon her. A full measure.
Let the full measure of the delivery come upon her in the name of Jesus. The full measure. In Jesus' name. Now, so, this is directive. Okay? Now, see another direction. There is one of you I'm already seeing. So, God said I should stand here. And if I stand here, He will reach out to that one person among you people that he wants to bless. Father, I am standing at the place. Now I ask that you stretch your hand and you reach out to the person in the choir that you want to visit. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. He's coming, oh, he's coming stronger. He's passing like a wave. Reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. If God has spoken to you, make sure you insist that God will perform it. Sometimes, sometimes God wants to know if you believe Him. Don't change the agenda, remain there. Remain there. Insist. You said this morning, this is what you will do. Ah, insist upon it. You will begin to see God's hand move. Now you saw how long I stayed here. My stay here was not to make it more true. But I insisted that that was what I heard. And God will perform it. I was doing my own business. He said, I should start. That is directive. Is that clear? So we are going to do word of knowledge now. You will come on my life. Yeah, we. On my life, you are the spirit of the living God. You will run my life, yeah, we lay your hand on someone that the Holy Spirit is not laying on his hand on. He will direct you first. It means his hand is upon the person. When you lay your hands, then you join your hand to his hand. Alright, so we'll, we'll do word of knowledge now. In Jesus' name. Now listen. Hallelujah. 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 Now you know what God is doing now? He wants to give the gift of word of knowledge to a few intercessors. Word of knowledge. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, concerning those of us inside, and those of us outside, you said you are given the gift of word of knowledge. Stretch your hand over the congregation, inside and outside, and release the gift of word of knowledge. Release the gift of word of knowledge. Release the gift. 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 Release the gift of word of knowledge. Of word of knowledge. Bring two of them for me. Now, you see, the, 
Yes, it's releasing. The way I know that he wants to release the gift of word of knowledge is by word of knowledge. I can demand that he moves ahead to do something. I can demand that if I know what is given. So I know it's by word of knowledge. So I now demand for it. You understand? He wants to give it. It is he revealed it by word of knowledge. Are you with me? It's informative. God wants to give word of knowledge. That's an information. Then I now demand for it. Oh yeah, Baba, release what you want to. And is that difficult? Uh, meanwhile, there are more people God wants to release the gift of word of knowledge. Father, they, uh, uh, I ask that you, 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 you release the gift of word of knowledge. Release the gift. Yes, there are two more people. Locate those two people. Father, locate them. 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 can know what is happening in heaven by the gift of word of knowledge. See, you can know what is happening in heaven. We yeah. don't believe in Sorry. Okay. You can go to your seat. You, you are receiving word of knowledge too. I saw that one. I saw that. One. Father, you said you will give her word of knowledge. You showed me specific. So that she will be able to engage things in the spirit. Pour out this anointing. 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 In the name of Jesus. Pour out this anointing. Pour out this anointing. Pour it out upon her. Pour it out. She needs to be strengthened for the work. Equipped for the assignment. Pour out this anointing. Pour it out. In full measure. In full measure. Informative. Strategic informative. Informative releases. That will place her in the place of advantage. Pour out. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Alright. Okay, you can go to your seat. Listen. You see, God is, is intercession is equipping you for. Don't run away from intercession. You, you hear? Don't run away from it. All right. Go back. Give time to intercession. You see? Through word of knowledge, you can know what God is giving can know people's situation. Like I'm, I'm seeing someone towards this direction that is under serious attack and the person is having haunting dreams. It's through word of knowledge. Through word of knowledge in the place of prayer. That's why whenever I finish preaching, the next thing I re recommend is let us pray. Once we pray, word of prayer is the domain where God releases word of knowledge. As, I don't need to have it from home. Once I can preach and pray. And if I know God wants to offer, is offering this by word of knowledge, I can demand for it. I need to have it. So there's no difficult thing we are doing there. It's just running on the scale of the prophetic. Hallelujah. The other day, a madman was molesting people, molesting people. I was just quiet watching him. When he came to my place, he became cool. I had plans for him that day, serious plans. But I was just cool first. Let him do that thing. Then he became cool. Then he left my place. Cool. Then he now started molesting all that people. Why? Right? He would have come. I had, I had a word of knowledge for him. So the word of knowledge is informative. Word of wisdom is what?
okay now we can pray now it's no longer teaching we are in the miracle service now this is not teaching again let's do the real one now if you feel comfortable sitting down to pray no problem or if you are standing no anyone anyone that is convenient for you just let's begin to beseech heaven now beseech heaven God said now, he said channels. Now I need to talk about channels. Just like I said, word of wisdom. Word of knowledge can come in diff two different channels. It can come as a dream, can come as an inner voice, can come as an impression, can come as a knowing, can come as a vision. Alright? But as long as it is informative, it is what? Word of God. What God wants to do now is that he wants to open your channels. Yes, he wants to open your channels. There are sometimes it is more convenient for God to speak to you through a dream. I don't know why, but it's more convenient. You, you should be a multi-channeled prophetic ent entity. Because there are some times it is not strategic. It's not in, in keeping with the nature of secrecy that the spirit realm operates with. For God to use one method all the time. Sometimes he knocks you off for a five minute sleep. And you have a trance. And then you wake up. But you slept for five minutes, but what you saw can reach back to about five years. Sometimes it gives you an open vision. But I found out that there are more details when you, your, your consciousness is suspended. When it's either a trance, you were knocked off by the anointing. The anointing comes upon you and then knocks off your flesh. Then you, you go into a sleep. How many of you experienced that? And then you see things. But you have not seen that in the recent times. Something is you I'm talking about blessing. Have you, have you had a trance in recent times? Hmm? You do? Okay. Now, God is going to renew some of the channels and give you more channels. The anointing that is coming tonight is for multiple channels. Multiple channels. Hallelujah. I saw a charger that can charge six phones at once. Yes. Hey my God, why are we buying charging? When one charger can charge what? You plug laptop, you plug it, you plug it. One small charger like this. You need channels, my friend. You need channels. <laughs> God will give you multiple channels. That's the prayer I want to pray. We will close down today. The major practical is tomorrow evening, but I don't want us to get rowdy today. Right? Uh, multiple channels. Can we ask God for multiple channels? Directed. 
You know, we said that when it is directive, it is what? With, with. There are other things I would have done, but I'm not sure if after we do those things, you will still believe that we are not using another power. I would have done some... I had other di- directions that are strange. Yes. But if we go there, and, and, and I'm not sure you will believe we are using real power. So, we will stop that one here for now. Now we are going to pray for the sick. It's a directive. Now, listen. If you are here, maybe you came with somebody that is totally deaf, or you yourself, you are deaf in one ear. Follow the instructions carefully. You are deaf in one ear. Okay. You have, yes, she is totally deaf. Have you? Okay. Uh, any other deaf condition? Can you open the door? Find out from the guys outside. Hallelujah. Uh, by the time we go into the lecture on power gifts, you will find out. Are you still with me? By the time we go into the lecture on power gifts, that one is the one I'm looking forward to actually. You will find out that power gifts actually move on the wings of revelation and gifts. Power gifts move on the wing of the revelation and gifts. Hallelujah. Anytime you find a strong power man, it's also a strong revelation man. So the foundation is the revelation. We need to ensure. Is there anybody with an ear condition out there? Please verify. I did not say you should be seen. That's how you bring the wrath of God on us. Did I say you should bring somebody? She is regulating you. She is the spirit that is regulating you. That's the problem. We went for crusade. The person that brought us for crusade. We go and bring some. This one is my aunt. You know, I had to... The, the, the release was to cause him. But I had to be very calm. If, if it were me, if Baba were to allow me to have my way, I would, it's a bitter cause I would have brought on him. But, you know, we are, we are the sheep of his pastor. We are his people. <laughs> Now, you see, when you are under a directive atmosphere, the preacher is not in charge. Why not wait to hear the instruction, the directive? What can the preacher do apart from the Holy Ghost? And if you are a preacher and you are trying to make people feel that you are in charge, you are not a preacher. Be calm. We are still taking stock. Now, for those people, hallelujah, that have a problem with hearing, this is the directive. If the hearing problem is with one ear, cover that ear. If it is with two ears, somebody help the person, put your hand in the two ears. Follow the directive. Man's part is to obey the directive. God's part is to release His power. Exactly. So let everybody follow the directive. If the thing has to do with hearing, close the ears that cannot hear. All right. Let me pray a simple prayer. I think somebody needs a key. It may be a directive. Amen. Alright, so can we pray a simple prayer? If it is a condition with the ear, tonight is for ear problems. Alright. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you are kind. You are full of compassion. Full of full of kindness you are wonderful you are loving it is because of this that you came to destroy the works of the devil pay the price so that you will be free from sickness be free from disease 
thank you today because of your emphasis on deafness. Your emphasis on deafness. Your willingness to heal deafness. And so in line with your willingness to attend to issues of deafness, I bind every deafening spirit. I bind every deafening spirit. I bind you. I bind you. And I command you. Be gone in the name of Jesus. I bind you. Deafening spirits. I address you. Deafening spirit. And I command you. Loose your hold from your victims. Loose your hold. Loose your hold. Loose your hold. Loose your hold. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you release healing for the deaf ears. Healing for the deaf ears. Healing. Okay, one of the ears has opened. You know, word of knowledge is informative. It's informative. The healing has begun. Lord, we thank you for the healing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for beginning this healing. We ask for perfection. For perfection. Oh my God. For perfection. For perfection. For perfection. In the name of Jesus. There is somebody with pain on the left leg that has also been healed. Word of knowledge is informative. Where is that person? You, ha- you came here with pain on your left leg, but you have been healed. Help me check outside. Pain on your left leg, but you have been healed. Pain on your left leg, you have been healed. Pain on your left leg, but if you check it now, you have healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. Where is the person with pain? You came here with pain on your left leg, but you are healed now. Someone else with pain on your stomach, but you are relieved already. You are he- the, thing, the healing power of God just touched that stomach and it has given way. You are relieved. Where are you? Stomach. Stomach. Raise the hand. Now, where's the person with pain on the leg? Pain on the left leg. That's what I saw. Pain on the left leg. Pain on the left leg. Pain on the left leg. Someone has been healed. From pain on the left leg, you have been healed. It's not just you. You have been healed. Is it left leg? Not left leg. Yes, left leg. Pain on the left leg has been healed. A migraine has been healed. A migraine. A migraine has been healed. You came with um, a pain on one side of your head. It has been healed. It has been healed. Where are you? Migraine. It has been healed. I'm seeing somebody with a respiratory condition. You had difficulties in breathing. You had difficulties in breathing when you came here. Yeah, but it's, it's loose. Is it you? Yes, difficulties in breathing, but it's, it's, it's loose. It's loose. It's loose. Now, where is that person? That person. Allow the person to come. Allow the person to come. Difficulties in breathing, but you, you are loose. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody with pain on the back of your neck, you have been healed. You have been healed. Check it. Check it. Pain on the back of your neck. Pain on the back of your neck. Where's that person? Pain on the back of your neck. You have been healed. Pain on the back of your neck. Pain. Where are you? Yeah. Come, come, come on. Pain on the back of your neck. Ah, this one is embarrassing. So, uh, an embarrassing situation. <laughs> an embarrassing situation has been attended to. Uh, amen. Yes, there's an embarrassing case that is uh, has been attended to. Uh, an embarrassing case. Yes, what's your case? Migraine. Migraine. Did you feel Did you feel anything when we I was praying? When you were praying, I was actually with my head. My head was down because it was aching. Even when I was walking here, I was feeling the pain. But all of a sudden, it just just left. Now that yes, migraine. Was it migraine? Yes. Come. Come. Migraine. Uh, so what was your case? 
it was migraine. I it actually started this afternoon. So while we were praying, I said they've not mentioned headache, but me I came to it, so I held my hand, and then it kind of diffused. Yes, it diffused. Did you feel anything while I was? I uh, no. No. All right. What What was your case? They said I had a lingering migraine. So most times when I want to pray, I struggle to pray because it comes and that though something is working on my forehead and I was feeling it it was even intense while we were praying so I was like Lord help Lord help that the case will be mentioned and let this infirmity go if it's your will so you mentioned it as soon as you mentioned it I felt a vibration and the pain left ok there was a vibration yes sir and the pain it left hallelujah you know what I'm seeing now you know I'm teaching and ministry so that you will know that what we are doing is not fake. Okay? Someone has been healed. His, his someone's spinal cord has been corrected. I'm seeing that now. Someone's spinal cord. You used to have pains on your back. Pains on your back has been healed. Alright, so what was your case? My own, as you, as, you, as you are praying, I just close eye praying. As if I see dirty, dirty full my front, as if they are removing it, removing it. And I'm feeling pain one side of me like this for how many days? Now, I don't feel any pain again. My God. Every dirty in your body, it don't come out. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. No more dirty go remain there. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Now, see, don't wake up, don't wake up and Start a healing service. Eh? Let there be a directive. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Meanwhile, if God says that you do healing services every month, it means the directive has already come. The reason why we are not doing it every, any month is because what? There is no directive. If you go ministry shopping and you see that somebody does a service on Tuesday in the morning, and then you say, oh... Because we went to Abuja on Tuesday, we were looking for people. Everybody was doing healing. He had the real friends. I say, they are thieves. <laughs> it's only one person God gave the mandate to do healing and deliverance. But Tuesday is anointed for what? May the Lord give us understanding. Yes, sister, what happened to you? It's feeling back pain when I was sitting down there. Then I cannot feel yes, that's fine. Your spinal cord. It has been fixed. Your spinal cord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, mommy, what happened to you? I had a uh, back, a caving of the backbone. Caving of the backbone? Um, for long. For long? For how many years? It has taken more than 10 years. Glory. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Um, I was working, I used to walk once. Okay, she used to walk yes. sideways because of the caving of the um, backbone. In fact, when you mentioned that uh, uh, spinal cord, I felt like a movie. There was a movement when I mentioned uh, my God. See, she's here. <laughs> Glory to God. She's here. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let your power flow through this body. I declare you permanently healed and the infirmity will not return. In the name of Jesus Christ. See, she's in. You know what I'm seeing now? That God is healing. A condition of sleeplessness. You, you cannot sleep in the night. You can, a condition. You cannot sleep. And you sleep for a short while and suddenly the sleep will go. God is healing that condition. Mommy, you are released. You are released. You are released. You are released. In the name of Jesus. You are released. Can, can you give Jesus a, a clap on? Yes, God is healing that person uh, uh, a sleeplessness condition. Sleeplessness condition. Sleeplessness condition. I rebuke that spirit. That spirit. That spirit of infirmity. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Be released from, sickness, from sleeplessness. Yes, mommy, what's your challenge? 
You, mommy cannot sleep in the night. How long do you sleep in the night? I just sleep only for two hours like that. Yes, yes, two hours. Who knows this woman? And you can confirm that she doesn't sleep. Who knows this woman? You know her? All right. Because what I saw is two hours. And she has confirmed what I saw. Father, in the name of Jesus, I banish sleeplessness in Jesus' name. Yeah, sleeplessness. You are released from it. I banish it. I banish it. I banish it. I command the spirit to go. Go. Go from her. Oh, okay, it's coming now. It's coming. 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 It's coming now. It's coming. Yes. 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 The spirit. Go. Yes. It has. It has left. You will sleep well. Yes. What happened? I am. Yes. Talk to him. I'm an asthmatic patient. Since from bed. But okay. now I can't feel anything. You can't feel it. Somebody put your hands together for this. We break the yoke of asthma. We release you from asthma. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, they, they, they. Can we speak in tongues for one minute? Just one minute. Aliyah Kambe. Aliyah Mamarada. Aliyah Mamarada. Aliyah Barababara. Aliyah Barababara. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. We had to do that. We had to do that because the spirit of asthma was still in the vicinity in the vicinity. So we have to do that too. To chase it down. To chase it down. Hallelujah. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, you are asthmatic. You can be healed. Can you come out? Asthmatic. Asthmatic. Any other asthmatic patient? What do they call asthma in Tiv language? Eh? Huh? Otingi. Now anyone that is a victim of Otingi. Oh, Tingi. Yes. yes, if anyone is a victim of Oh, Tingi, you bring them here. There is, God is doing a, an all round job. Father, we, we declare him healed forever in the name of Jesus. You can go. Yes, what happened? Yesterday, I was feeling a neck pain. Leg? Neck. 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 Yes. And even because... this evening, I was feeling it. And as soon as you mentioned it, Yes, next pen. The ten, the ten left. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. It's, it's permanent. Ah. Go to that mic. When you said um, we respiration problem. Yes, respiration. My teeth from my lungs to my stomach, as if it was on fire. Then my mom looked at me. Then she said I should go to you. Then it stopped. Hallelujah. We can do that fire again. Lord, let this procedure be perfected. Be perfected. Be perfected. Be perfected. We perfect it. Let it be perfected. We banish everything that is on your respiratory tract. And we release you today. Aha. It is done. It's, it's perfected forever. Yes. Oh, are you asthma. All right. At least we have an a case here to experiment with. Father, in the name of Jesus, you, you healed one asthma patient because you intend to heal asthma. And so tonight, asthma, I bind you. Asthma, be bound. Yes, sister, you don't pray alone. Just be bound, asthma. Be bound, asthma. 
Be bound, asthma. Be bound, asthma. Be bound. Be bound. And in the name of Jesus, come out of her. 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 In the name of Jesus, come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. In Jesus' mighty name. We banish asthma tonight. We release you from the scourge of asthma tonight. Asthma, leave. Asthma, leave. Asthma, leave. In Jesus' name. All right, you won't have asthma again. Yes, yes. Yeah, problem. Yeah, problem. Yes, the past five days uh, in school, I've been having the year just closed. And from very young age, I do have air problem, and that really clean it a lot. And All right. So, at the past, I have not bought cotton board, and I usually use it to clean, but the air closed it to an extent, and I couldn't hear clearly with this very ear. Yeah. But while the prayer was going on, I placed my hand, and when I, I was smelling hydrogen peroxide, that was what my dad usually used to clean the ear whenever he's cleaning the ear periodically. So, I opened the ear, and the ear is just open. Is, is the hydrogen peroxide open. that closed that ear? <laughs> And Jesus, the doctor, began to purge it out. God has power. <laughs> now, you know, you know what? The power was not in the prayer I made. The power was in the directive. Don't stand on the crusade ground and stand in yourself. No. Just a directive. That's all. The ear has opened. Now, you can remove uh, your hand from her ear and test the ear. You can clap, clap, maybe clap, clap around and test the ear if she's hearing. Test, test it. See, Jesus purged away the hydrogen peroxide and opened the ear. Hmm. Father, we give you glory and we seal this miracle with the blood of Jesus. You are free. 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 Yes. You are free. Healings are still taking place. People are still getting healed. There's deliverance going on. I'm even seeing somebody that used to visit you in the night. Demons visit you in the night. You always have a terrible time at night. And God is addressing that situation. And addressing the demons. And addressing your situation right now. I'm seeing that. It's going on. I have this pain at the back of my neck. Okay, so when you him. mentioned it, I should get it that at home. Hallelujah. Give him glory. <laughs> Father, it is permanent in the name of Jesus. It is permanent in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's permanent. It's permanent. The lady can hear. Okay, let's have her. Let her. No, no, you don't need to need that. Come. Okay. All right. Can you can you just stretch your hand in that direction and ask God to open her ears? Has she been like this from bed? Is it from bed? Since 2000. In Jalingo, we saw somebody, my age mate, from bed, dead and dumb. Shall I hear it? In Jalingo. That was what brought salvation to the Ali. <laughs> hey, I'm a man of the Mokoria I'm 
name of Jesus. Uh, we, we, we thank you Lord for the blood. Yes, yes. The utterance of the blood goes in the spirit. Goes in the spirit for redemptive purposes. Let the claims from the negative supernatural be blotted out. Even at this point in the name of Jesus. And right now Lord I ask, I ask demons of deafness. Hear me. Jesus paid the price. Many years ago, we are products of the victory that the cross has procured. We are law enforcement agents in the spirit to command obedience according to the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Deafness spirits, hear me. I bind you. I bind you. And I command you. Aha. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, I command that chain. Break off right now in the name of Jesus. Demons of deafness, hear me. I break your hold and I command you, go. Go. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out.
How do you communicate to her? Yes. I need a feedback. Yes. I need a feedback. Before I release her. Okay, take her. 